Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld, and I'm back here with Alita St. James, who's an energy healer, a spiritual coach. But I want to talk to you now about the big picture, because you're a visionary. You're a healer, but you also see a bigger, bigger view for humanity and our evolution. So I know you work on individuals, but you get downloads of something else going on. What do you see going on on the planet here? It's a time of extraordinary change. Okay. People are in a lot of turmoil in terms of the change because they have to let go of the old way of thinking and being. Mm -hmm. Even if they've worked on themselves, that's kind of disassembling. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to a, a higher paradigm mm -hmm. of where we need to be. And it's collectively. So even though I'm working one-on-one -on -one and in, in groups yeah. and on the radio and in the media, it's still, it's, it's, there's a force that's going out now. And if you hear more and more of divine love, divine love, loving each other, that's what's coming into the planet. It is a force. It's like there's a, a frequency shift that's happening in general. And a lot of people aren't able to um, assimilate that. Do you find that? Like a lot of people are freaking out on some level. Who... Yeah, because love brings up its opposite. Uh -huh. So you see, so as much as you're bringing in love, you're also bringing out self-hatred, self-condemnation, hmm. judgment, all that kind of stuff. And that's why you need tools to be able to use the light, use the breath, use healers to be able to shift it so that you're a vessel to allow yourself to vibrate love. It can't just be a concept. It's an experiential feeling. For people who don't know what the divine love is, who haven't had an experience of that, how do you well, start to open them? I had an experience of it. Tell me. Of when I was maybe in my... I'm maybe about 24, 25, mm -hmm. and I was meditating in a group, and all of a sudden, and I don't see visions all the time. You know, there are people that see visions all the time. Right. I don't. Every once in a while, I get blessed with a vision. But this was so profound, and it was when I was helping my brother start the Guardian Angels. Mm -hmm. There was an angel that came in, and the angel gave me like a rosary mm -hmm. and with a crucifix on it, and that energy of that angel, there was so much bliss in that feeling that it was like I was ready to just let go of anything and just be with that angel. Uh -huh. It was the most extraordinary bliss. And it's what people talk about when they've gone over, that there's right. this extraordinary feeling of bliss. So first you have to find, start to with human love. If you can allow yourself to feel human love, and it can be That's for a hard pet. enough, though. I know, but you oh, start oh, with your with pet. A pet. A pet. I can pet. start with a pet. With a pet. You <laughs> okay. know, some people they love their pets, which is yes. fabulous. Because start with a pet, feel that love, then you can relate to it. Mm -hmm. A person who hasn't hurt you, you know, on a deep level, <laughs> go to that person. You know, feel that love, and then feel the love that you have for your children. Mm -hmm. You know, the love that you have for your children is always there. You know, right. sometimes it gets a little less, sometimes it's greater. But it's always there. You know, you're always going to be there for them. And right. then from there, you go into the divine love. And the divine love is that blissful state. But you can feel it when you get into meditation. Mm -hmm. If you just empty yourself, it's in the silence that you can start to feel it. When all the chatter has gone and you breathe, you can feel the light. And then you just say, okay, I'm bringing in your angels, mm -hmm. guides, beings of light the universe, the God of your understanding, and just feel, you know, allow yourself to listen and feel. How can we start to tell people that they're existing on more than one level at, at once? Because it's also multidimensional. Yes, that's you know, what I mean. It's like the yes. fifth dimension, the fourth dimension. Yes, how do we start to awaken as a civilization to those dimensionalities? Well, through meditation, through mm. using the light, through cl clearing out the emotional, you know, uh, garbage that's in, inside our systems and mm -hmm. the negative thinking, the lower frequencies, mm -hmm. then you start vibrating up. And then you, once you start vibrating up, you feel what's going on. What do you mean on. vibrating up? Vibrating up is moving into love. Okay. And once you do that and you're in that meditative open space, you can start to feel those dimensions. Mm -hmm. And then they become very familiar to you. Now with the healing, I'm in those dimensions most of the time. Because you have to be, you're pulling in that energy. I'm pulling in that energy. So mm -hmm. that's why I love my work. Mm -hmm. So no yeah. matter what's going on in my life, I have to close it. And that's mm -hmm. my, thank God, my show business uh, career So you discipline. shut off your shut personal off, life. 
and boom, I'm in that room and we're ready to go. Mm -hmm. So in the last show you talked about like the big engines, the big guys coming in when you call in the, when these higher forces, say that again. It feels like the big guns are here. That's all I can tell you. It's, you can feel this, uh, this uh, spiritual presence that is just so uh, strong and blissful and supportive. Mm -hmm. You know, you could feel supported by that energy. But and it's they're different. happy. Like it's... right now, it feels like they're here. Are they here? Oh, yeah. Okay. And so they're smiling <laughs> because they like the fact that we're talking about them. Okay. Well, but like a in my ego centered that right, way. <laughs> right. Because, you know, because they're being acknowledged. Yeah. So a lot of times they're not acknowledged. By being acknowledged, there's a resonance that actually amplifies the light. Yeah, I because mean, they want to help. You know, mm -hmm. they're here to help. Mm -hmm. And they're here for everybody. It's just that you have to acknowledge that they exist. And you're a vehicle for that to happen. Yeah, because I use a lot of light. They mm -hmm. love the light. What ultimately, if you could sort of talk to them, channel, do they want for humanity? They want us to evolve. They want and, us to evolve with love. They mm -hmm. want us to stop the wars, even though light brings in the dark. Mm -hmm they're moving into that, they're helping us evolve to that place mm -hmm. within our human consciousness. So what I've been thinking of, because I'm 66 at this point, mm -hmm. is like, okay, I'm, I want to live to 120. That's in my, you know. Sure, why not? Why or not? longer. Well, I, I don't know. 120 right now is kind of fine for I me. don't think you should have an expiration date. I well, think all you right. should keep going. All right. Then I I'm, mean, why not be the immortal essence like Babaji? Why not turn your body into light? Because right now, at 66, mm -hmm. I'm not looking at that. Maybe by the time I hit 100, I will. Okay. And okay. start working oh. with the immortal body. Okay, right why now, not? I'm working the, with this The one. golden light body. Anything is possible yeah. as we move into this you know, new time of higher frequency. And so we're here to bring in the light. And right. I think the light affects the cellular structures. Totally. Yeah. And that's what gets rid of disease in the body. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know. We have to make ourselves available to the light. Right, by taking away the low frequency in the physical form and moving into God consciousness mm -hmm. so we're not afraid of death. We know that it's eternal life. Mm -hmm. When loved ones leave us, it's like, okay, we know that there's a continuum. I think one of the densest frequencies is resentment. And, mm. and when we, you know, regret, guilt, um, those emotions that keep us thinking in an old way with an old scenario going in our minds. Yeah, because it loops. I call it mm. the looping. Right. And once we start to loop, then that becomes our reality. So we keep living the, the So thing. how do we ever break those frequencies, those looping frequencies? Well, in Life Shift and how yes. I work with people yes. is that you, you, first of all, you have to acknowledge what you're feeling. Like, I'm angry, blah, 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 because it gives you information. But some people are always angry or... Because they're looping. Right. All right. So they're right. in the, the brain has, it lets off a chemical inside its little self and it mm. goes, hmm, I'm angry. This is good. I'm, mm. I'm doing something. Right. It doesn't realize that this is negative. And it also gets addicted to those chemicals totally. of anger. Totally. Yeah. Or mm. sadness. Mm -hmm. Right. And if, it's not ha if someone's not having those emotions, if they've been addicted to those chemicals, they'll look for a reason to get angry. Totally. So right. everything is seen through the filter of anger. Right. Or sadness. Or, or potential what? anger. Yeah. So what do you do to get people out of that loop? So you do the emotional healing work, which is the life shifting work. So you take, I have them breathe. I have them breathe into the feeling. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge what it is. And specifically, I'll have them talk to the person that they're angry at. Uh, and uh, I'll start with like, so for instance, if they're, if they're angry at, mm -hmm. a, at their mother, mm -hmm. I'll make them dialogue because I can say, okay, go back to about six years old, what was happening then? And then from this six-year-old, their inner child, their six-year-old child, sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's 12, it depends on where it is, I'll start a whole dialogue, which is, I feel sad that, mm -hmm. and I'll have them go into that. I feel hurt that, I feel afraid that, mm -hmm. I feel angry that. So I have them mm -hmm. start to express it. Once they express it, then I have them release it because they start to realize that, you know, demands what you want. I start to change the experience mm -hmm. from feeling victim and like squashed down to feeling like they can be on top of it. Right. Then I have them imagine a whole different scenario going on. And that's where the healing takes place because they're out of the trauma mm -hmm. and they're into the possibility of a whole different experience in their lives. Mm -hmm. And then we open up to the idea of like, what do you want to create? 
and that starts to clean out the junk, and then you infuse a higher light frequency, so it makes it harder for them to go back to that right, past. Right, because we're in the brain, and even in the emotional structure, we're creating new pathways. Yeah. So when you're under stress, you go back to the old. Mm. When you've created new ones and you raise the frequency to a higher level, then when you're under stress, you go to the higher frequency, mm -hmm. not the lower frequency, mm -hmm. which is where you want to go. You don't want to be thinking, oh, this isn't going to work, hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. You want to go into seeing it working. And that takes training. It's like going yeah. to the gym. But if you're working with an energy healer, like myself, who's done this for so many lifetimes mm -hmm. and, you know, years now, 40 on the planet. Mm -hmm. So you're basically going, you can transfer that ability to shift quickly mm -hmm. into their cells. So, for instance, when you're sitting in front of a high-level guru mm -hmm. and you're meditating, you can feel the energy. It's a transference. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to transfer that feeling to them so that they it awakens that inside of themselves. Because you're holding it in yourself. You're right. holding that, and then they're resonating with that. So you're actually sort of lifting them in a way. Right. So they get to feel what it feels like, and then they can do it. They start mm -hmm. to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why they can change so quickly right. and really say, oh, my God, Alita, this miracle, that thing. Because it's about self-activating their ability to heal themselves in their DNA mm -hmm. and in their whole genetic patterning. Right. Because often we're taking everything from our family pattern into our lives. And that's where it becomes really difficult. Right. So if people can see it, observe it, and witness their own patterns, self-destructive patterns, they can raise themselves above it and say they don't ha they have a choice. Right, exactly. But if they're not conscious of it, they don't have a choice. No, they think that this is how it is. Mm -hmm. And when they say you create your reality, you create your reality. And that the more you, re you know, work with this, the mm -hmm. more you realize that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, happiness is not about getting a specific thing. Mm -hmm. It's about a state of mind. Yeah. And when you're in that state of mind, then you're happy as you go through your day. So it doesn't mean that you don't get upset. Mm -hmm. I think th this is like, you know, crazy thinking that, you know, everything's blissed and I'm happy and blop and every I love everybody and I never get pissed no, off. No, people are still human. Yeah, they're human and you mm -hmm. have to be able to express it, but you don't want to get stuck there. Right. You want to shift out if of If someone it. makes you angry for a good reason, cut you off, whatever, um, be you can feel that. Right. But, be assertive. Right. I think, that's, yeah. I think that's important as opposed to saying, oh, you know, you're supposed to be this perfect person all the time. Because it doesn't work. You right. want to you want to give people some things that they can resonate to mm -hmm. that absolutely work. What what do you want for yourself? I'm just curious. Where's your next step and move and? Um, well, I've been really working on this divine love, like mm -hmm. you know, embodying it a lot. Mm -hmm. So I want to live more from that place mm -hmm. every day. And then, of course, I would love to expand my work out to larger groups of people because it's that time right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And naturally on a personal level, my children are nine years old right now and I'd love to spend more time with them, quality mm -hmm. time. And I love being with them. I love watching them grow. I love nurturing them. I love mm -hmm. seeing their creativity, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that they're riding bikes. You know, it's great. It's great. But also seeing that they have their own path, you know. Totally. And that, you know, it may not be what you might even have wanted for them because they're doing their own thing. Yeah, I never wanted. Yeah, you just let you them You know, I unfold. just, I let them do everything. Like, I let them take acting and singing and mm -hmm. painting and, you know, bike riding and martial arts or whatever it is. The, the schools that they're in are very mm -hmm. creative schools mm -hmm. as well as academic. And then I tell them, you make your choice, you know. Are they sort of like your messengers, in a sense, to the, uh, re to the world out there, you know, because you see people and you're working on this healing level, but then you have to deal with the practical. Well, you know what, what's really yeah. funny is when people come in, even some of them are like 35 years old, and mm -hmm. they go, oh, Alita, I'm so old. I, you know, it's all over. I don't think ever, anything's mm -hmm. going to happen for mm -hmm. me. And then I look at them, they look at me, and we laugh. Mm -hmm. And I said, you can't tell me that. I'm 66. I'm still going, girl. And you're still evolving. Right, you're still, still moving. Yes. It's not over, you know? Yeah. And so then they laugh and it gives them hope, mm -hmm. especially if they want to have children or they want to start a new career or they feel like they haven't found their path. Some people don't find their paths right away. Right. You have to look at a lot of directions to find the yeah, path that you Yeah, and want. then we're then, oh, wow, this is what I really love. This is mm -hmm. what I really want to do. But if you clear away all the shoulds and could'ves and woulds and all this mm -hmm. that 
we've you know had projected on us mm -hmm. then you can get to the pure authentic self and then that one you know do you train people to do what you're doing because i think everyone's a healer they might not all have the facility for intuition but but i think everyone has the capacity to do that they do and and i think i train my clients by doing the intensives so if they mm. work on the intensives what are they tell me about well, the, the intensives. intensives like these downloads now there's uh -huh. no more cds they're all downloads uh -huh. They're 20 minutes and they deal specifically with, you know, moving the chakras mm -hmm. and that's inner balance. And then I have inner passage that is a vision uh, meditation that I sang from my third eye. Mm -hmm. that you sang you, it from your third eye? Right. I just meditated on the third eye and I got the music coming mm -hmm. from it. And I had a blind musician, piano player, mm -hmm. put it down and it's a beautiful recording. So mm -hmm. I want to get to the idea of what you see like as the really big picture for humanity, like where we're going as a planetary civilization, like what's the future look like for us? Or what can we do to make it this amazing planet that of divine love for all of us to live on that level? So for all of us to live on that yes. level, I say start the day off with, I am blessed. Okay. My life is blessed. My relationships are blessed. My day is blessed because then you're coming from that high frequency of receiving blessings. Mm. And just keep saying that, I am blessed. And then you start to see that you're blessed and you start to feel grateful for all the things that are coming into your life. And gratitude, as they say in <laughs> Unity, Eric Butterworth, mm -hmm. attitude of gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> it gets it all the time. And then before you go to sleep, just go over your day and say, okay, what do I want to create in my life? Mm -hmm. What's my intention? more love, and then just feel like it's actually happening. Mm -hmm. Better finances, more freedom in finances, more creativity. You put yourself in that vortex of feeling like it's already happening, mm -hmm. and then your subconscious locks into that. And then as your subconscious is locking into that, you say, okay, what if I created today that I could be grateful for mm -hmm. that's creating more financial abundance for me? better relationships mm -hmm. and really acknowledge those things so that you're in that loving vortex. Right. And when you do that, it sends the energy out into the universe. I think that's really important. As you acknowledge existence, it like amplifies the, the vibrational effect. So when, you're, when something comes to you and then you're really appreciative of it, it sort of creates more of that. That's what I'm getting Going from out. what you're saying. And, yeah. you know, I wrote this story in, in Life Shift that was really charming, like in the 70s, okay, I was riding on the subway. Yes. And this first guy came in, he was panhandling, and he was so disgruntled and angry mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and he wanted money and, uh, and nobody gave him anything. Mm -hmm. Two seconds later, he leaves and another guy comes in. Oh, when the saints <laughs> come marching in. And you know, he was blind. He had every reason to be upset mm -hmm. and disgruntled. But people were taking out the dollars and they were just giving uh, it to him. You see, because he was happy. He was happy. He was happy and, and, and he wasn't, you know, down. And he was grateful for the money he was getting and he wasn't like in a bad, angry mood. Right. And so he just magnetized, I mean, I was, because in the 70s, a dollar was a lot, you know, at that particular <laughs> time. People were just giving it to him. And so that meant, whoa, wow. I can see a planet where everyone is vibrating at that level of frequency of gratitude and joy and happiness and the whole paradigm of how we are as human beings starts to shift. We start to acknowledge each other, not for the money they make or how famous they are, but for the, the feeling. Yeah, the essence. Right. That's but what I want to create. Right. And it starts with each individual person, because the more you acknowledge your own essence mm. and work and evolve with yourself and then have friends, I call it the dream team of support, where you have like-minded people around you. And then that creates a bigger resonance, a group resonance. And then that keeps going out and out. And there's so, mag so many magnificent things happening right now. Like what? with groups of, just for women, all right, just women alone. Groups of women that are getting together, supporting themselves and networking and trying to not only raise their consciousness, but help each other out. And that's like fabulous to see. Well, I think it's great because you are a great model for women because you never 
felt less than. You always felt empowered as a woman. That's what I get from you. you never, oh, yeah. The and, divine feminine. Yes. I, I always... But other women feel like are second class or whatever those thought forms are in the way, but you never had anything like that because you've always been out and taken charge and been out in front. What, what made you different in that way? What did you have or come in with or well, know? I was born with that feeling inside yeah. of me. Yeah. My father was very spiritual and metaphysical. He supported all that. Mm -hmm. He was his own person. He was a merchant seaman, traveled all over the world. And my oh, mother was always saying, do what, you know, do what you're strong as that, follow your dreams. You know, she was mm -hmm. always there doing that. And then I had that with inside of myself. Mm -hmm. I never listened to what anybody else told me I should do. Right. And I was always happy just being my own person. When I had my kids at 57, I said, I don't want to sit in regret uh, saying I couldn't have children mm -hmm. because I'm a single parent or certain things didn't work out in my relationship. Right. I'll you, do it myself. Right. I did. And you were. You were a single parent of twins and you wanted to have twins. I visualized twins. I had a girl doll and a boy doll right uh -huh. on my stand with all the different women that I brought children into the world for. Wow. And they were holding their babies and I said, that's for me and bang out twins. And how's that been, that journey with the The most children? extraordinary journey. I mean, when you think that you know anything, you realize you know nothing <laughs> when you're dealing with the children in this age. And how do the children help you be a better healer? Because I have to, I just have to expand. I can't get stuck in anything. I, I have to, you know, relate to them in terms of this new generation. Mm -hmm. I have to be able to shift and glide. I can't be, you know, a crotchety 66-year-old. <laughs> when you, you know? But when you tune into, like, your kids or that generation of kids, is there something different about the vibratory frequency? Totally. What? They're, they're a lot more sensitive. Oh. Um, th well, of course, with all this different, you know, the, the Internet and mm -hmm. the games and this and that, in many ways, they're ahead of us mentally because yeah. of all of that. They're also, um, they're also, well, you know, my twins, I, yes. I can say. My son is like, he'll go, he'll go onto the street. He's definitely from another dimension. He goes, he says, you know what? My mom's a healer. <laughs> he goes, she's right over there. He said, I'm a healer too. But you know, if you have something really wrong with you, Go to my mom. She's been doing it longer. <laughs> <laughs> really? You that know? is so cute. Right. No, it's hysterical. And my daughter is, you know, just beautiful. She dances. She's an artist. She's a she real loves, little girl. Like, yeah, loves she loves just sewing. Ju jumping around. She just, yeah. ch I loved her long hair. And I had to take a deep breath and say, Alita, you can just freak out that she cut her gorgeous long hair. Or you can say, that's fabulous. <laughs> you know, I love it. I love both, short and long. You so know? you're being challenged. I was being challenged. Stretch, <laughs> just when you thought you had it all together. Right. Coco um, showed up, you know. That's good. So uh, do you, uh, it's same with uh, people who come to see you. You may, like, get someone who've never had a situation like this, and you can, you have to stretch beyond your own means in order to accommodate, like, new situations. Like someone like yourself, I'm going to be, talking on a higher level, multi-dimensional mm -hmm. level, you'll understand what I'm saying. Right. Somebody Other people else, have no idea what no, you're saying. No, so I have to get down in terms of what makes sense to them, because mm -hmm. I just care about what makes sense to them. And if you could go really far out, like with yourself, where would you go? Like, you know, let's say beyond the multi-dimensionality. I mean, where, what's the next point to stretch you to a spiritual level? Would You, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's your spiritual edge. <laughs> my, my spiritual edge. I, I'm yeah. learning that every single day, yeah, Alan, every yeah. single day, you know. I mean, you right. want to become the divine love feminine. I mean, not be, want to become, but you I'm, are... Be, I'm working towards that. To being more and more that. Yes, more and more that. And so, as you said, you know, like you shifted me. I did? You shifted me when you said, <laughs> why just stop at 120? Okay. Why not be a light being? Why not go into the immortal body? Now, well, I know about the immortal body. Yeah. I've kind of worked a little bit in that area, okay. but then I had a shift and say, yeah, why 120? Why? Maybe yeah. you want to go longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know. were forever beings anyway. Yeah, but so, you shifted me on okay. that. Okay, well, see? I'm happy I could do that there you for go. you. Right. So, let's, so you have to stay around just as well, long I'm as I am. staying around, and we're both become light beings. Yes, because I don't want to be here just, you know, light being by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not going to be by yourself. I just, I see a whole generation, our whole consciousness that's able to access the light dimension and activate the bioluminescence mm -hmm. frequencies in the cellular structure that start to turn the body into light. Well, you know, when I was in India, body. I yes. went to the Temple of Light. 
Oh, I which was that. like in the southern part mm -hmm. of India when oh. I was going to the fertility temples. Mm -hmm. And the guru gave me a letter so I could go in because mm -hmm. normally they wouldn't let a Caucasian woman in there. Mm -hmm. But I saw that that's where people would ascend into yeah. their light beings. I think we're in a time of ascension. Yeah. I think that's what your work is really about. If you don't mind oh, me telling you. It's no, it's not about just about finding the man of your dreams or no, the woman it's of a, your dreams. That's, you know, that's a byproduct. Yeah. I mean, that's all great, but the, love. The, that, that's all the drama of human dimensions, which right. is a byproduct of the spiritual Evolution. Um, activation, yeah. really, that's happening here. And all those things, all those human um, events are beautiful in, in fulfilling the human dimension, right. but I think we're here to own this the, other. The, we're here to own the drama of what it is to be human. Right. And then when we do that, we ascend the body to the next level, level. Of, it, of adventure. I could just see my kids saying, Mom, really? A light body? Yeah. <laughs> I could see that. Really? <laughs> Why not? Okay, if we want to leave people <laughs> with, an <laughs> with something really uplifting and beautiful and inspiring so they could like tune into your work, but also give them something that they can take home with them, like do, give them something. Okay. <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> no matter where you are in your life, no matter what you're going through, just know that you don't have to get stuck there that there are people that can come in and support you, that can love you if you just allow yourself to receive that. And then if you start to work with the light and the breath and a sense of a higher spiritual energy in your life and hold on to your dreams and your vision and create a sense of gratitude and blessings every day in your life, then you live from that place of happiness. And that's what's gonna give you the greatest fulfillment. And so that when you're at the time where you're going to make your transition, you'll feel like, I did it. Nothing to regret, nothing to think that, mm, I wish I had, because it's about love. It's about having love, receiving love, and being love, and loved. Mm. Thank you for the love that you put out. And, and that's really, I feel, why you do this, because you have all this love you want to share, yeah. and a healing is part the way you share it. Yes, that's absolutely right. And thank you, Alan, for having this wonderful show. Mm -hmm. And all the years that I've known you, it's been really wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Alita. You're Alita welcome. St. James. Alita has written a beautiful book called Life Shift. It's a real primer for her work and the way you can really do these exercises to evolve yourself. So I recommend buy the book, see Alita, and shift your life with Life Shift. I'm Alan Steinfeld for New Realities. If you want to reach me, go to my website, newrealities.com. Email me at newrealities at earthlink.net. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Alita. Thank you.